statistical software program that mimics SPSS, which is um, a common statistical software. So they work very much the same. So let's walk through what we would do. So if you've opened a data set for PSPP, which hopefully um, you've gotten to this point where you're, you have PSPP installed and the data set is, or a data page is ready for you. The first thing you wanna do is create your variables. So if you look um, at the bottom left corner of this data sheet, you should have variable view highlighted or kind of bolded. There's two tabs, there's data view and there's variable view. And you first, you need to go into variable view and create your variables. So I am going to create two different variables for you. I'm gonna um, create one that is for grades and um, we'll just say student grades. But if you'll notice, and I'm gonna hit tab, it doesn't keep that name. And the reason was because I put in a space between the name student and grades. Um, PSPP, just like SPSS, will not allow any kind of um, uh, symbols or spaces. So when I put student grades in, I am going to just capitalize the first letter of the words and, and not put a space in. So then I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab. So um, instead of hitting enter, make sure to use your tab for PSPP. And I'm gonna tab over and not change anything, don't change anything until I get to label. Now the label is basically, um, a, a deeper explanation of what the variable name is. Student grades is very vague. We wanna be specific. What are the grades reflecting? So I'm gonna put um, Psi 230 quiz one grades. How's that? It's just kind of a, oops, except for I can't spell. So it gives us an explanation of what the variable name is. And in that you can actually use spaces. And if you notice, I could I can move the columns over so you can see the entirety. I can use spaces here. Um, and that's where you can put more information there about what the variable actually is and what was being measured. Now, I'm not going to do value labels for grades because this is what is called a continuous variable. So grades can be anything from zero to whatever, and it could be percentages, it could be decimals. So it's not categorical data or discrete data. So we're not going to touch that value labels box. But is what I do want to do is leave everything the same until we get to the measure. And is what I wanna make sure to do is drop down and choose the appropriate measure, which correlates with the measurement scales. So it, this student grades is not nominal and it's not ordinal. Um, grades is actually ratio data, which in PSPP and SPSS is considered scale data. They call it scale. So if you have interval or ratio data, you wanna make sure that scale is chosen here. So now you have everything for that first variable. If you notice, it's all done in the row. So let's create the second variable. Let's say I wanna look at gender. So I'm gonna just type in gender here and I'm gonna tab through. I'm gonna remove decimals because gender doesn't have any decimals. There's no values related to it. Um, label, it seems pretty self-explanatory, but I'm gonna specify its gender identity because this isn't, maybe we didn't ask the question of what sex they were assigned at birth, but what gender do they identify with? So I'm putting here gender identity. And that clarifies what I'm looking at with gender. Now with gender, I do wanna have value labels because what we need to do is assign numbers to words because these statistical programs, they don't do anything with words. Everything is analyzed by numbers. So I wanna create labels. So when I click in this box, click again, um, this little value uh, labels table pops up. And is what I wanna do is assign a number to a label. 
So I'm going to put the number one under value and I'm going to type in male here. And so now, from now on, whenever I want to say, oh, this person was is a male, I'm going to use the number one. And then for number two, I'm going to assign this as female. So now I have one equals male and two equals female. And if that's all the, the potential categories within that variable, you, you could be done and you can hit OK at the top. And now you have value labels. And now the you'll leave everything the same, except for you do want to change your measure. Gender is nominal data. It's just a, a category. It has no meaning. It's not ordinal. It's not a ranking. And it's definitely not interval or ratio data. So we want to change the scale to nominal. Scale is the default. But we want to make sure that that's set at nominal. So now we have two variables created. We have the student grades and we have gender. So now we can actually go into our data view by clicking on that tab at the bottom left um, of the screen and we can enter grades in here. Now I had highlighted six because I was um, playing with the data a, a little bit ago. Yours won't have these dots. But I'm just gonna throw in some random numbers. So let's say, I'm gonna click in the top one and let's put 90% here. So that's a 90 um, for the first student, maybe 84. And then if you tab, it goes over to the um, to gender. If you um, hit enter, it goes down. So I'm gonna do um, 79 and I'm gonna hit enter. And if you'll notice it drops down. Uh, so in the data view, it um, you can use your enter more um, than you can the tab. Uh, then let's do 80 again, and we'll do, um, let's say 91, and then we're gonna do um, 88. How's that? It's just random. And let's just say the first three students I enter in are males, and then the last three are females. So if you notice, I'm entering in ones for the males and twos for the females. And then for the grades, I'm just entering straight down their, their grades. So it's all done in columns in this data view. Now you have your variables ready to go and you can actually run some statistics on this. So in this, you'll see there's, um, oops, I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to click out of all of that. Um, there is this analyze, you can do analyze or graphs. So let's just say I wanna look at some descriptives is what I want specifically. So if you'll notice, I open this up and I see, oh, here's quiz grades and here's the gender identity. I wanna look at the statistics for the, the students' grades. So I'm gonna look at I want the measures of central tendency and I want the measures of variability. So I am going to take off the minimum and maximum because those are defaults, but is what I want is the mean standard deviation, the range, um, variance. So here's some of those things that we have. Now in um, frequencies, we can get the mode and the median we can't get that with this, but I'll, I'll do the basics um, of what you do need. And so then if I hit OK, we, we should um, get a second screen pop up. And here's what that second screen looks like. And if you'll notice, and hopefully you can see it. If you cannot see it, I apologize, but an entire other screen um, pops up and, and it's called output. And that shows us our mean, our standard deviation, our variance and our range, which we requested. So the mean for these six students was 85.33. So the output is a completely separate file from the data set, um, as you could see that we were working with originally. So if you ever have to save um, your um, data, like maybe in the middle before you run any analyses, or maybe you've ran some, but you need to do more. You need to save the data set 
and you need to also save the output. It's two separate files. So hopefully that helps walk you through how to create variables and run some just very basic um, analyses. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask.